Quilters. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilts cutting expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilts creativity expert. Welcome to part two of the Go Row House Runner Sew Along. Today we'll be cutting and sewing the house shapes for this runner. That's right. Plus, we'll have live question and answer going on throughout the show with AccuQuilt's community engagement specialist, Miss Emily Kerr, as our moderator. Hi, Emmy. Hello. 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 So happy to be here. I'm the floating head. You are. It's <laughs> a Friday perfect. party. That is. All right. And since we have Emily here to help us, be sure to ask any questions you have in the comments section from wherever you're streaming our show, and she will relay those, and Eric and I will answer That's them. right. That's right. Now, Quilters, in case you missed it, the last show for this Sew Along series was part one of Making the Row House Runner, and we sewed flying geese units for our tree shapes. Look, I finished mine, Erica. So I did too. Yay! Yay. So Look at how fun those are. They really are fun. Yeah. And really easy to make. Yes, yes. Chain piecing, as you would say, four days. Four days. All right, and if you missed the introduction, make sure you watch that as well. Yes. It's beneficial to watch each of the Sew Along shows in order for extra tips and tricks for the Row House Runner. So check them out on AccuQuilt's video gallery, Facebook, or YouTube pages. Speaking of Facebook, we have been following along with hashtag AQSews on both Facebook and Instagram. But have you quilters? Using this hashtag easily lets us and the rest of the AccuQuilt community see how your row house runner is coming along. So be sure and share it with pictures of your progress on all social media. Right, so when you post your picture, then in your comments, when you're, you type in your comments, at the end, do hashtag AQSOs, because that way it'll pop up and everybody can search it that way. Yeah, that'll be great. So Emily, what's been shared with us already? Yes, okay, so Miss Gail, um, first off. Look uh, at this beautiful oh, fabric. Oh, that'll be fun. Her fabric choices were just unbelievable. So she said that she, um, you know, used a little bit of her scraps, but she also yeah. got, you know, some new pieces as well. I think my favorite one is the little Woodstock fabric with the peace signs yes. and the heart, like, so classic. And I'm thinking, is that a flamingo peeking out there? Maybe I believe it might them? be. I think How you're right. Fun. And bananas or like something. Beach cabanas. <laughs> there. So cute. And then next we have up Miss Judith. Oh, this is beautiful. Ooh. So fun. And she said she also got scrappy with it. So she yes. went into her stash and just went all out. And I love the colors. Great she way to bust up your stash. I see some grunge, Pam. I, I already saw it. <laughs> already am heart stopped about it. We're loving it. Right. And then we finally have Miss Deb, Look, who created. Her trees. I know Ooh. she's got them all perfectly sewn, and she's ready for today. So hey, those are some fantastic-looking flying geese trees. They are fabulous. And I love that gray background fabric. That mm -hmm. I know. Chose. I think that that's really pretty. I chose blue, and you kind of have that white with snowflakes. Yeah. But now here's her thing. Her trees are all the same. Um, my trees are in different order, but you sewed. Uh, I did. The same. I sewed mine pretty much in the same. Yeah, that's all right. I think I've it. got one that's different. That's all right. Two that are different. Oh, <laughs> twos and twos. There you go. There you go. Well, it. I've, if you've been sewing along with us, you know that this pattern is made with the Go Cube. And Pam and I, we're both using the 12 inch mix and match cube. But since the cube comes in seven different sizes, there's a pattern to go with each size. Right. So. Using the 12 inch pattern like we are, you'll be creating a runner that's this size in front of us and it's gonna finish to 83 and a half by 21 and a half. And I'm thinking I might have to buy a new cover for my bed because the colors, so that, it matches. So I have I, a white one, so I think oh, that's gonna work. We do not have white, but, but something. But well, I'm using Christmas fabric, so now I think maybe I need a red one. There you go, there you go. To give you an idea of how the different sizes would look, here are houses in all the seven sizes. So Erica has the first right. three. So I started, I started and, little. And okay, I'm. Where are we putting? Where would you like me to put these? By your ironing board, probably. By my ironing board, okay. So here's my little four inch. And then I did the five inch. And the four inch is obviously my favorite. Right. And it's then so I did the six inch. They're all, I, that four inch is so cute. I mean, just but even when you have your hand next to it, you can just see how petite and adorable it is for yes. scale. Yes, darling. Yes. Love it. I think you need two rows with those. So one row facing this way and then the other row facing this way. There you go. Great It'd idea. be such a cute table runner. 
All right, so I have an eight inch block, and of course I made mine with Halloween fabric. Of course. So um, eight inch, if you have the ready, set, go, this is the cube that comes with the uh, ready, set, go. Mm -hmm. Here is nine inch, and again, I made it all scrappy, and went to my stash. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And this one actually, next to Halloween, is my favorite. Last year I made a quilt that had all this black and white fabric. Mm -hmm. So I had a whole bunch left, so I thought I'd pair it with solids. I like that. That's yeah. a fun look too. Yeah. And I think when it's all over, Erica, we should make like a little runner or something with our with all, of, all of our little houses. In our spare time. In we'll our work spare on time. That. There we go. So the row house runner pattern is available at AccuQuilt.com. It's a free download. And when you go to download it out of your library, you'll get the option of downloading any or all seven sizes that are available. And as I mentioned last week, when we made the tree sections of the runners. Right. So today we're gonna cut and sew the house blocks. And this is where you can start to get really creative. Gather up your fabric and you're gonna need two dies uh, shape two and three from your mix and match cube and the coordinating mats and depending on what size your cube is. Right, right, right. exactly. Always same, uh, same shapes. That's right. Now the main part of the house, let me get this one out. And I I'll love this because hers out. is like a little gingerbread house. It has those cute so little. So the main part of the house is a nine patch. Okay, it's just a basic nine patch. Mm -hmm. And then the roof is made from two half square triangles and then we've just got a little sashing strip kind of on either side. It's really so, cute. Yeah, so for the roof, we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. For the roof, you'll use shape three. That's the big half square triangle in your cube. And you'll need two half square triangle blocks for each roof. We're making four houses, so. Right. All right, oh, and I'm gonna grab the die and so we know how to cut our width of fabrics. That's right. So, to build our width of fabric, of course, we're gonna take, Pam's gonna take her, uh, would you like a, a ruler? Yes, well, I have one, look. You have one? And look, they got us both we irons this week. We iron, and ironing mat is really very exciting. I know, I feel like I could just sit here and sew all the rest we, of we the We could, day. they're gonna turn out the lights, Pam and I are still gonna be sitting here. Yeah, I know, they're gonna be going. No, we're still going, we're not we're done yet. We're still going. All right, so here is shape number three from the um, 12 inch cube. Yes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure across and it's just almost seven inches. So I'm just gonna add a quarter of an inch mm -hmm. on either side and rough cut my fabric okay. seven and a half inches. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna grab my fabric. So look at my roof house. Oh, that's Those, so my pretty. My fabric is really fun. It looks okay. like you've got your... And I, my trees and my roof are the same size, okay? There you go. So now I've already cut, this is my background, and okay. I've already cut that. So let me grab my bigger ruler so I can cut that. Okay. Seven inches right here. All right. So while she's getting ready, do we have any questions yet, Miss Emily? We surely do, yes. So um, Mary's wondering, she started her squares for the houses, but her issue is keeping the units square. How do I make sure I'm keeping my seams to a quarter inch? Ooh, that is a good question. That's something that I think a lot of quilters struggle with. And I'm gonna say, hopefully you have, or you could get a quarter inch foot for your sewing machine. So there's kind of two basic styles. So right. let me show you um, what they both look like. I think I've got both of them. So if we get, can we get Thank close you, up here? Okay. Justin's gonna look. So. There's two, and you can see them right here. They're almost the same exact foot. One is going to be just with the, the quarter inch here on one side. This one has a blade. You can kind of see. So it's like a little guide. And if you're struggling, be sure you get the one with the blade on it. So that's like a bumper. You know, when you we are learning how to bowl and you have the bumpers that go down the alley, that's exactly what this is. That's gonna help keep you on the straight and narrow. Right. Now the other thing you wanna do whenever you're starting a project, and we don't talk about this very much, mm -hmm. but you wanna, when you're making that test block with your first seam, go ahead, take a ruler, like our little one inch acrylic ruler that we have, I love this one, mm -hmm. and check your seam allowance. Yeah. And then press it and measure it again. Right. It's always good because all everything's gonna, contribute. 
right. the weight of your thread, everything is going to contribute. Right. Wow. Okay. All right, are you ready to? I am ready to cut. So this is my um, roof fabric, and I've already cut my background fabric, so I'm just going to come right here and cut seven and a half inch strip. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm going to set this aside. Now, here is our big pro tip for this, isn't yes. it, Erica? Yes. So since we're going to sew these half square triangles together, we're going to cut them together. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open up my fabric and I'm going to put right sides together. And then when I lay it on the die, I'm just going to fan fold back and forth. We can always do up to six layers. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about fan folding, this is what we mean. And I want to make sure I don't have any salvage there. Usually I cut it off, but today I didn't. Okay, so when we go back and forth like this, we're going to make sure when I get up there, I'm going to make sure my pieces are all together. But when we go back and forth like this, this is what we call fan folding. So you can actually fan fold back and forth three times mm -hmm. because we can always cut up to six layers of fabric. Right. Okay, so I'm going to take this and cut it, and I think Erica has hers already right. cut. So Ooh. I've got some already cut, and you can see I did exactly what we talked about before. I've got my right sides together. This is my background. This is my roof, and so I can go ahead and start with my quarter inch seam allowance. Perfect. Now, when I cut these quilters, because I'm using the go big, all right, I'm going to use a 10 by 10 mat. I'm not going to worry about this little tail, okay, because it's only going to cut where there's fabric and a mat. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to kind of roll up my tail and just run it through our cutter. I feel like so, my machine is very noisy. Pam, while that um, is going through the cutter, can you talk a little bit? So Miss Christina and Tammy are both wondering if you have any tips for cutting directional fabric. We've got some folks who are using stripes and, you know, things that they want to make oh, sure that they're in the right direction. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you to cut a test piece of it and see, because you want to make sure you're cutting on that lengthwise grain. Mm -hmm. sure. So, for example, I think it's really hard to cut half square triangles with directional fabric. Right? It is. Squares are a cinch, stripes, you know, strips are a cinch. But half square triangles and quarter square triangles, those are really hard to cut. Yeah. You know, I and I ran into that with my quarter square triangles. So I have directional fabric for the she top has of trees. my trees. Oh. And I ended up with upside down trees. And I could deal with sideways trees, but not upside down trees. So I ended up going back and cutting just the piece that I needed turned right side up. Sure. So I could have cut them all right side up. I didn't go back and recut them all. But keep in mind, if you're doing that, oftentimes it will use more fabric than you would right. normally use. Right. Sure. All right, so now I have my half square triangles already cut. So since I put them right sides together, I can just peel them off the die and chain piece for days. That's right. Hey, Erica, this is such a cleaner space than my current space. Oh, me too. <laughs> Pam and I, in getting ready for shows for you all, um, oftentimes our sewing spaces look like things have exploded. No one has, no one has been there to clean it up lately. So. No, she she sent me a text message last Friday and afternoon and said, "My sewing space is a mess. I need someone to come clean it." I just didn't respond. Yeah, there was no I'm like, answer there. I'm not coming. Right. So. Emily, do we have another question while we finish up some roofs? Yeah, actually, this is kind of a fun one. So Elizabeth C. is wondering, what's the purpose of a bed runner? Oh, wow. So a bed cute. runner, yeah, it's just all about aesthetics. It's at the bottom of your bed, so you could have, like, pillows to match. Mm -hmm. You could have... Um, you don't have to change out a whole quilt. Right. It's just a really great way to accent a bed without making a full-size quilt. It well, can serve the added bonus of keeping your feet a little warmer if you're somebody yes. who tends towards cold feet. That was exactly what I was just gonna say, Erica, too, was my mom, it was, she was a big, like, napper, and she loves to um, just, yeah, that's, that's the one thing that she'll do is just kind of tuck her toesies underneath the bed runner and mm -hmm. call it good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I have a cat, Pearl, and she's a big fan of bed runners, so. Yes. Well, and, and I bed. would, I, if you have a dog who sheds, 
<clears throat> Riley, mine, um, then go ahead and if they like sleeping on it, then it keeps them off the rest of the runner. Off the rest of the bed, you mean? The rest of the bed. I mean, I've been known to go through six sheets on my uh, little lint roller, getting fur off of my comforter, so. Okay. All right, so now I have my roof sections all sewn together. Look how fast that was. Whoa. It was very fast. Da -da -da -da. They're going speedy quick. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is we're going to press these seams open. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to give it a good, just a little set, you know, a little press there. And then we're going to lay it open like this and press them open. Emily, do you know why we press our seams open on this one? On this one, are they going to, um, let's see, because usually we press it to one direction if they're going right. to nest. But I know that pressing them open is going to reduce bulk. Yes, that's exactly why we're doing it. Yes. <laughs> good job. Good job. Good job. And do we have other questions or comments? We're excited. Everybody's joining us on a Friday. Well, I love Absolutely. this. So speaking of, of doggos, Margaret um, Jay comments that the four inch cube would make an adorable dog house with the big house if you were to like. Oh, the, yes. Oh, sizes. That's a great idea. How cute would that be? Have a little dog house in the yard or something like that. Love that's it. That's a great idea. Um, and then it. I do. Oh, Angela actually has a question about the bowl cozies. Our new, probably the, the, the new one. Just released. Yes, yes, we just released our small bow cozy. She's wondering if you use a fusible for an applique, is it still microwave safe? Uh, so the answer to that is no. Negative, Ghost Rider. <laughs> um, the minute you put fusible on it, that has glue that's going to melt. Right, right. So um, we would recommend you not doing that. Oh, hey, okay, I've. I've ironed enough of these. I can. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so work just at your having own a happy pace. time here. That's right. Work at your own pace because this isn't a race. If you get everything done during the show today, or if you don't get everything done today, you can go back. You can rewatch the show, or you can go to the blog. I've written a tutorial, and there's pictures there as well. Okay. So we both got our seams pressed open on our roof. So yes. now we're going to sew them. You sew them together in groups of two to create your roof units. So I'm going to sew show a roof together. Okay, so yeah. Erica's sewing a roof and I am sewing a roof. So we're gonna, and you can just double check and make sure that your fabrics are lined up. Super loving this fabric. Yes, Which it's one? Were, This brown. It's so the, pretty. It's the color of my trees as well. Um, we were talking about this the other day that, you know, fabric choices make all the difference. Yes, and we've seen so many great choices from all of our quilters and it's made everybody's look so different. All right. Ooh. All right, Emmy. Peggy has a great question. Hi, Peggy. Um, if you're using wool, do you put an interface on the back before you cut? If we're no. using, no. Because wool, you want to do one, if you're cutting well, wool, you're you probably going to cut one layer, one layer. and really, um, yeah. It's going to just be so great. It's not going to. It cuts beautifully, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Love that. And Ellen is wondering, do you use a tab of fabric to start sewing triangle corners? Yeah, so we call that a leader, right? A leader. Leaders and leaders enders. And, and enders. I don't usually. I don't usually either, but there are people who make whole quilts with their leaders and enders. Yes. So. yes. I'm, I'm just not. And, and usually I'll go several times without having anything get stuck. Now, Pam's got a single needle hole on her throat plate, and so that means she really doesn't need that. I don't, but I want one because. Oh, I do love it when the points come together. <laughs> don't we though? Look at okay, that. Okay, so now we've sewn this, so now we're gonna press our seams open yes. here as well. That's right. Okay. I'm loving this. Perfect. I'm gonna it's a beautiful day here in Nebraska. We were hoping it would be cold and rainy because then that's the perfect <laughs> sewing conducive to sewing. Yeah, this time of year when it's this nice out, you really feel like you have to go outside and yeah. take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Or um, rake up all the leaves. Do you have leaves? To we have leaves, we have a boy. Tom comes and rakes our leaves and. Oh, how nice. Mm -hmm. Everyone should have And he mulches, so. Yes. It's a beautiful time here in ne Nebraska. It is. Yeah, it's like 65 right now, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> every day, every day. Of course, then they'd call us San Diego, so. Yes. 
Hello, our friends in San Diego. Yes. All right, here we go. So I've pressed my number. Hey, thanks for getting us a new iron and a mask. Yes, thank you very much. Much easier. You can both press at the same time. Okay. All right, so we can stop pressing those. And we've each got one full roof made, so we, we can go ahead and move ahead to building okay. our houses. Okay. So just like before, now we're going to use shape two. So that's the small square in your cube. Oh, and I will get it. just like before, <laughs> oh, they very conveniently put them right there by the cutter for us. Sometimes. Our, you know, we have a great live stream team. We do. They take good care of us. They do. <laughs> so... Um, you're just going to cut measure a quarter inch over the sides, cut a width of fabric strip. Mm -hmm. You're going to need nine squares for each house. But again, right. So I don't have nine different fabrics and I'm okay with that. So yeah. I'm going to just add some. So it measures three and a half. So we're just going to cut a width of fabric four inch strip, just like we did with our um, roof. Okay. So here's some that I have. And, oh, look. Okay, and we're just gonna that measure. Is such cute fabric. It is darling fabric. Okay, good job, Riley Blake. <laughs> so, Pam, we have an interesting question, Erica. We, we um, uh, DR is wondering if they wanted, if he wants to add a door in each house, would, which square die would, would they use? Would they just, would the, the rectangle in the cube just be the perfect shape for that? Oh. oh, well, you could, or you know what else you could do? You could do. do shape number two. Or here's what you do. You could just you consider the square your door. Or if you happen to have the Go Camper die, there is a lovely door on the Go Camper die yes. that would be really cute to applique on as a door, and that would be adorable. It, we'll work on that. <laughs> it would, well, because I think it's no, rounded it's off yeah, at the no, top. It would be super cute. Yeah, that would be okay. perfect. I thought y'all were laughing at me. No, no, I'm no, I'm thinking you're brilliant. Oh, okay. I would never laugh like that. <laughs> yes, you would. No, I would tell you first. I'd say, Erica, what have you lost your quilting <laughs> you mind? Lost your quilting mind? <laughs> that's what I would say. That's no, that's generally a yes. So it's okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my um, fabric strips that are four inches. Yep. I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna make sure I have a mat because what happens with that a mat, Emily? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. Yeah, Emily knows too. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. We all know. We all know. Okay, and we can go back and forth six layers. I'm just gonna do since I I pre-cut some of my fabric. I'm just gonna do the four layers. Perfect. And I'm just laying out pieces here to decide on how I'm gonna have them laid out. But I've got all of my fabrics here except for one because Pam's gonna do some magic with one. Oh, I am. Yes. I am, I am. Okay. Magic, magic, magic. All right, so I have some fabric oh, as well. Oh, I love well. this pink one. Oh, how cute is this? All of the things are cute. All of the things are cute. They are so cute. So we were talking about leaders and enders a little earlier. Lynn was wondering, uh, she's never used them before. Can we kind of give a little basic yeah, explanation? Yeah, so let me show you, Lynn. Let me go to my trash can. I'm gonna say, what have we got in a scrap? Okay. <laughs> so um, this is what you would use like for a leader ender. And what you're gonna do is just, it's kind of small. Let's do it differently. You can tell I don't use them. picky about our scraps <laughs> well, here today. I'm so sad. what you're going to do is when you start, you're going to start here and sew. And then if you have a half square triangle, okay, right here, what it's going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to go a straight stitch, and then it's going to just pick up that corner. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. start right here in the corner, sometimes it gets all jammed and bunched right. up. Right. So this is what they call leaders and enders. There's fancy ways of doing it because I know people who cut these and use them and make quilts. Right. And so then before they finish, so we're chain piecing all of our squares, but before they'd cut the last piece off the machine, then they'd run through one of those, you know, sets of pieces, whether they're squares or half squares or whatever, and leave it on the back end of the machine mm -hmm. so that it's ready to go for the next time. Okay. All right, so here's my flowers. Are you laying stuff out, Erica? Laying stuff out. I've got a nice little hole here in the middle, though, for yes. a little fussy cutting square. We're gonna fussy We're cut. We're gonna it. fussy cut, and Pam's gonna do it for me because 
I was the one with the fussy cutting fabric, so. Yes, you were, but it's okay. I have lots of yes. fabric here. Okay. So, like, um, I told Erica, I'm, I'm just kind of using a variety of fabrics. Yeah. That'll work. As long as they're not together, I'm okay. Yeah. So cute. Okay. Super cute. All right. Now, um, Erica has this cute little fabric, and it is right here, and it's this darling Christmas fabric. It's so cute. So... She, I'm going to cut out a, a square that has the Pam's pickup truck. Actually, it's like the Heller Walker wagon when I was right. a kid. We had a, right. Did you have a station wagon when you were a kid? Yes. 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 Didn't everybody? I believe so. I everybody did. I believe so. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this super cool trick on how to fussy cut. And my little piece of mylar. Is it over here? Has Behind the. Oh, it might be. Let me just check. Again, this is looking more and more like my sewing room. <laughs> okay. Give us an hour at a sewing space and we can make a mess My up. gosh, yes. Oh, yes. Stay tuned. Okay, okay. so how do you want go. me to do this, guys? Back there. I know, but, okay, so I have a mylar sheet, okay? And it's just like, uh, you can buy it at the um, office supply store. You can cut, oh, hey, Great. So here's that mylar. It's going to cut the square, mm -hmm. and I'm going to run it through the cutter. Now, the thing you have to remember about fussy cutting is that it's going to waste some fabric, okay? Right. But we love it. We love it because it gives you a way to really center a design. That's right. And I just had it. Do you see my roll of tape? No. Oh, is it, it's, is it in one of the slots? Oh, probably. Uh, yeah, what it was just right it? there. It was. I don't know. Hold on. I can find more. So, Pam, I think it fell behind you um, right oh, on the floor. Oh, there. Thank oh, you. It's by the light. Aha. Uh -huh. So, no, the, oh, there. Right yes. underneath. Yep. <laughs> Again, so much like my sewing room. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to get this little uh, wagon with the tree on it. Right. Okay, okay, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little plastic and I am going to tape it down using painter's tape because painter's tape is not gonna hurt my... Do you uh, not use a ton of painter's tape in your sewing room? I do, all I the do time. Too. We're gonna talk about painter's tape next week again too. Yeah, okay. So now what I can do is, this is a little long, I wanna tear it off there, okay. So now what I want to do is I can peel it back and then I can kind of lay my uh, little piece down here and when I come back over with it, it's going to show me, I'm going to be able to manipulate the fabric to make sure that little station wagon with the tree is in the center. And this is such a great trick. And you want to make sure that it's even on either side and that it's even on the top and the bottom. And look, I got a little candy cane in there. And then once it's centered, then I can put the mat on. Now, the question everybody asks is, is it going to cut the painter's tape? And the answer is yes, every single time. So make sure you have a big roll. <laughs> okay, give it some love, <laughs> slide don't lift. And it's okay because it didn't damage our template. But now Erica can put this. Now I've got it and I can lay it right here. Look at how fun that is. And it's perfectly cut to, to be right in the middle of my house. Yeah. I love Isn't that. that. Cute? I'm gonna put it right in the middle because it looks yeah. perfect. So that's a great way to fussy cut. We have yep. this, and this is a great video to watch over and over again if you're like, oh wait, what am I supposed to be doing there? Yeah. That's how it is. Exactly, exactly. And if you want to check out the blog, there's another way of doing it in the blog today. There so we go. If you only you only can cut one layer at a time this way, but that's how you get it picture perfect. That's so how it's fun. It's a fun way to really start personalizing your project. All right, now we've laid out our houses. Yep. And um, I'm just using six fabrics or five fabrics or however many I'm using. So this is what I'm going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing the rows together. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to press in one direction and then press in another direction so that our seams nest. That's right. All right, Amy, do we have questions? 
Let's see. We've got to sew. Hmm. So Judy says, um, er Erica uses 80 weight thread in her bobbin. Is it also Aurifil? Yes. Uh, well, mine no, is. mine is not. Mine is a pre-wound. Um, oh, yeah, she orders her pre-wound bobbins from the um, intranet. Wonderful. Oh. You can buy them at your local quilt store sometimes, too. Well, that's fancy. Let's see, Velma is also wondering, when you cut the strips for the four inch cube pattern, do you use the same size as the written pattern? The same size as the written pattern for the four inch version. Right. So there is a version for the four inch. The strips will be different sizes. Perfect, yeah, because those are a lot smaller. But yeah, you do the exact same thing where you're fussy cutting. We're gonna follow all the same things, right. So everything's the same, it's just different sizes, just like our cubes. Awesome. And then, oh, this is a great question. Jackie C is wondering, is the cutting table all one piece? So that cabinet that's set up behind Pam and Erica is called the Go Quilt Block Center Cutting Cabinet, um, which comes with that awesome little ledge that catches your dies. And it's brilliant for the Go because bit. it stores your dies and your cubes and it has little slots to stand them all up in and Lay your mats flat. It's great. Yeah, it's yeah. And if you look it up on the website, you can see all the. It's got almost like little like book. Uh, yes, book it is kind of thing. It is one piece. The the ledge there comes off, but then it fits down into the table. It's so nice. And it's a great height. It is a great height. Oh, this is cute. So Sherry says, um, if you put the car as the bottom square, then it looks like a car parked in front of the house. Oh, <laughs> oh that's cute with a tree on top. Yeah, the exactly. tree on top. Too cute. Okay. Love this. Oh, that car reminds me of Chevy Chase and Christmas Vacation and uh, <laughs> getting going to the car, the tree lot and trying to find one. <laughs> You know, so or many. if you go out in the uh, wild to cut down your tree, you know, they're big, they look smaller when they're out there amongst yes. their fellow trees. They sure do. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I have my rows sewn together. Yep. So I'm gonna press them in opposite directions. Yes. So they nest. So I'm gonna press this one towards the left. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I'm okay. pushing the boundaries of my ironing cord here. Yes, and quilters, if we have any other questions, let me know in the comments, happy to. And Pass remember, those to Pam and Erica, we're pressing. We're not ironing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not doing this. Exactly. Just laying our hot iron down there and letting it do the work. Oh, I missed a question. Ah, Pam Emily. is wondering what is the best way to lay the fabric on the die for triangles? Mine stretches all the time, and that sounds like a lengthwise grain. Yes. yes. So the lengthwise grain needs to be. Parallel. parallel to those lengthwise blades. You know, it's interesting because Eric and I, we talk about this all the time and the difference that it makes. And the other day, she and I were cutting on a die and we had a real long discussion. Yes, we did. About that lengthwise grain and how to we find did. it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then it just, that makes such stretch that it's gonna really make your block wonky. Right. right. So your lengthwise grain, is gonna go parallel to your lengthwise blade if this was a half square triangle or with a square, doesn't matter. So that when it's going through the cutter, it's gonna be the same angle as your shape mm -hmm. and the tight grain is gonna be on the side. Right. So and I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only, well, there are two exceptions to the lengthwise grain. The rule, the first are strips. Yes. There are no lengthwise plates. And the second is applique. Well, and really, you put fusible on a piece of fabric, right? It's all happy. And technically, the third would probably be circles because. Oh, you know how I feel about cutting circles without a die. Right. <laughs> Silly. It just shouldn't happen. Silly. <laughs> I oh, feel like my machine good. is very loud. It is very loud, but it's okay. Okay, so look, here's my block. <gasps> so how are we going to press the back, Erica? Um, press those seams, the side, the side to side seams, go ahead and press those open. You can spin them all if you want to. No, I'm just gonna press them open and be happy about that. Okay. 
All Let's... right, Emily, do we have questions? Yes, Miss Paula has a sewing question. Hi, Paula. Hi, Paula. My quarter inch foot seems to wiggle, so my quarter inch isn't always right. Do you oh, have any that thoughts? would make me that would make crazy. Yeah. Um, make sure that it's your uh, that it's screwed in. That it's screwed in right. That right. depending on what kind, because I have different ones. This one, um, it locks in, so I don't have that problem. But if you have a foot that you screw the screw in to hold it on, mm -hmm. make sure that screw is really tight and you might want to even use your, I know, I'm a lazy quilter and I rarely do this, but go ahead and use the actual screwdriver that came with your sewing machine to make sure that it's tight. Yep. Otherwise, you might want to replace your foot because that would make me crazy. Yeah. Oh, bananas. All right, so I have my blocks all sewn, so I'm gonna wait for Erica for a second while she finishes and her last yes, scene there. I was talking. It's okay. So we have a couple more folks that are asking about le uh, lengthwise grain. Oh, here, I can right. show you. So Mary uh, is wondering, so does it go the same length as the label on the die? Yeah. And then Deb yeah, yeah. is wondering, uh, so this, should the salvage be facing me as it okay. lays on the so die? So here we go, quilters. Here's the salvage. And Erica will be keeping this one because this is super cute. Oh, yeah. Super oh, yeah. cute. Okay. This is the salvage edge. This is the lengthwise green. Okay. So if I'm going to lay this on my... Here, have a die. I have a die right here. Okay. Yeah, I have a die. This is how we want the lengthwise green. These blades, it's going to be parallel to these blades. Mm -hmm. So if I were laying this fabric here, I would take this lengthwise grain parallel to the lengthwise blades. So the lengthwise grain is always parallel to that salvage edge. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. I do love this fabric, Erica. I do too. That is a Kimberbell for Maywood Studios. Yeah, I gotta love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a great question about lengthwise grain. It and is. You're gonna know that it's lengthwise grain because look how tight it is, listen. Nice and tight. Yeah. This is the stretch. This is oh, not yeah. what you want, that bias edge. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Are you good? So we're good. So the next thing we need to do is put some strips on either side of your house. Yes. So Pam, I think, has some cut. I'm going to yes. cut some. So I need to cut two width of fabric strips that are going to be two inches wide. So I'm using the two-inch strip cutter. They're going to finish at one and a half. So Two plus two is four, so I added a quarter of an inch on either side. That means we it's can four do and a half. Math. This math, quilt math, I can do that. Yes. So <laughs> this is a four and a half inch with the fabric strip. I'm going to cut this on my die. Pam's already got some cuts, so she's going to show you how to cut it down to the right length. Right. And don't forget, if you're not using the 12 inch version, check the pattern for the correct die and cutting instructions. Oh, such a good idea. Yeah. Read yeah. the instructions. Okay. okay, so I have my two inch strips, okay? And we need to cut them down. We talked about this last week. This is when we refer to sub cutting. Mm -hmm. This is what we refer to, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna grab my bigger ruler. And what I need are strips that are two inches by nine and a half inches, okay? So I'm just gonna come right here because look, I have the salvage edge here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm gonna just go right there about 10 inches to the salvage edge, okay? Then I'm gonna flip it this way, and now I really wanna make sure. And Erica, they gave us new mats. I know, it's really fun. Wow. So one thing, just to point out really quick, and you know, we don't think about it very often. There is a hole in these mats, some of them. Oh, yeah. There's a hole at the top to hang it up. If you place that over your fabric and a piece of uh, the blade, in fact, that piece of the blade and fabric has no mat over it. Right. So, so be sure cut. that you have it not over where you want to cut because just that little hole would not cut then right. and that would annoy you. Okay, oh, wow. I'm going to measure twice, cut once. Nine and a half by two. Nine and a half, okay. There we go. And now I can come here. So nine and a half by two. Since we're chatting about strip dyes, let's, uh, yes. let's chat. Cindy has a question. Hi, Cindy. 
She's wondering in storing my long strip dies, should I store them laying down or standing up? Oh, I stand them up. You don't want to stack them one on top of each other. Right. And they Too don't heavy. care if they're on their side like this. Right. Yeah. Or this, but don't lay them down because the poor monkey on the bottom is not going to be happy. Exactly. Yeah, you kind of think of it as like books on a shelf, you right. know, and they can right. be long ways or lengthwise, but it's as long exactly. as they're standing up, they're, they're happy campers. Exactly. Okay, and I need eight strips. So I'm gonna do it again. Right, because four houses, one on either side. Look at us, knowing some stuff. I know. All right. Now I've already got a couple of cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and you're gonna sew one on either side of your four patch unit here. Okay. And when you're doing this, this yes. is how you wanna do it. You wanna chain piece your pieces and you wanna lay your pieces out. Just be efficient. Exactly. Efficient. Efficient. <laughs> okay. And, all right, so I'm going to do exactly what Erica is doing with my rows. Excellent. Maybe? Maybe, maybe. Okay, I know I'm I've heard. losing stuff, Erica. While you're, while you're looking for that, Pam, lose? Miss Cindy. My whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, here it is. <laughs> It's on yours. <laughs> well, I didn't take it from you. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about That's that. So funny. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, Cindy Wallace is wondering, okay, if you spin your seams, are they easier to nest? I don't know what spinning your seams okay, is. Okay, so nest, nesting comes first. Spinning comes after. Ah, okay. Okay, and this is not a good example to spin. Spinning means... Here, okay. let me. I can I can show them right here because we got an overhead, okay. right? Okay. So here is my side seam, mm -hmm. okay? And what I'm going to do is once I've sewn there this horizontal, I'm going to just take my seam ripper very carefully and take out those two seams. What? Okay, because then when I come here, I'm able to just take my fabric and open it up and it's going to lay nice and flat. Whoa. Usually spin your seams when you have four layers. Or when you're doing a four patch. So when you're, when you're doing, doing, doing just the four patch, it's a great thing to do. And yeah. it looks fancy on the back side. Fancy. You know, if you're showing off. Yep. That's an Ella and Burns trick. We love it. Yeah. I think yeah. I saw one of you do it with like the whirling star or something. Yeah. Like sure. That, I believe. Yeah. Cause that one's got a lot of little die? points. What? Have we released that night? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I'm not gonna get my hands. That time of the year. <laughs> not letting off any secrets, so. Not okay. talking about stuff. Oh, so I've got my strip sewn to either side. I'm gonna go ahead and press them towards the outside because that's the path of least resistance. Okay, now here I'm gonna just give you a little tip. You wanna cut your pieces two by nine and a half so that it lines up here with this uh, nine patch. What you don't want to do is cut a two inch strip, sew it to the nine patch and whack it off. Because if your nine patch isn't the right size, then your whole uh, row runner is going to be wonky. Right. So you want to make sure that you subcut that two by nine and a half. Mm. Tempting though it may be. Sometimes. Right. In an effort. Yes, to save time. Okay. Oh boy, look at how quickly this is all coming together. It goes together. These houses are super, super quick to put together. So now we're ready to go ahead and put the roof on. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. Okay. Um, you'll sew the roof to the nine patch, so Erica's going to show you hers, because I'm still yep. sewing sides. Well, but I didn't. Open. I didn't press all my roof. Oh, okay. Oh, Hold on. So. If you wait just a minute, then I'll be done. I will. I'm gonna put it down here. <laughs> We're all happy. Emily, do we have questions from our viewers? Well, Miss Pam is wondering. Um, do you starch your fabrics at all? Do I what? Starch your fabric. Okay, we have this conversation quite a bit, <laughs> and my answer to that is no, 
because here's what happens. As much as I love the smell of sizing and starch, right. <laughs> what happens when you put starch on it? It gets wet. Like, oh yeah. And the minute it gets wet, your fabric is going to stretch. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want my fabric to stretch. I want it to stay just nice and tight. Right. Now, we never, ever, ever use steam. Right, but never. I do make sure that my fabric before I cut it is not, doesn't have any big gaps or, you know. Big lumps, lumps or bumps. In them. Yeah, or folds, right. yeah. Folds, that's I, what I was looking I for. I like, I do like working with a crispy fabric, I'm not gonna lie, but I very rarely pre-wash my fabric. Oh, I never do. Because, unless it's just a solid red or black, maybe. Right. Because I just, well, A, I'm a lazy quilter. But B, with today's fabrics, you really don't need to. And then it still has the little sizing on it to give you that crispness. I did um, a travel quilt for Oakley, and the center was a really dark purple. Oh. And I pre-washed that purple. Did you? Yep, yeah. make sure. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my house. Are you sewing your house? Are you having troubles over there? I'm having some troubles. My machine is not happy about something. Oh, so. well, I will sew this and then we you can sew, sew that and I'll <laughs> catch up with you. So, so you no, I do love good crisp fabric, but I do not starch. Yeah, and I like the smell of it too. I do. All right, well, we're just gonna start over from the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. I couldn't resist. I, I, you were right on cue. So when this you is read, an you begin with. Question. <laughs> Miss, Miss uh, Deanna is Hi, wondering, Deanna. what's the best way to clean the buildup of adhesive off of a steam fast iron? Oh, um, okay, magic erasers. Really? Mm -hmm. Those things are amazing. They're like gold for all sorts of things. <laughs> Yeah, magic erasers. Perfect. They're really good, and then because you can throw them away. Well, they kind of and they kind of disintegrate. You can also clean any iron with, um, if it's not, not if it has like a Teflon plate, but if it has just the metal, um, and it's a really extreme case, you can use some really fine steel wool. Oh sure. Oh, yeah. That scares me. Well. Sometimes I've taken my iron though and pressed like the wrong side of fusible. Oh, sure. right. Every, oh. Uh, yes, I, I, I've gotten that <laughs> distress call from others. Yes. Hey, oh, look at well, that. Now it's happy, so I'm gonna sew and catch up with okay. you. Oh, so look wow. at this. How am I pressing my roof? Am I pressing it open or just towards the roof? Uh, you can press it however you want to. Oh, goodness. That doesn't happen very often, so I'm just gonna <laughs> press it towards the roof. I think I press mine towards the roof. What was wrong with your machine? I don't know. Your lid's up. Oh. <laughs> I will sew for hours with that up and not even notice it. Oh, mine just has no lid. My little brother here only sews a straight stitch. All right. It's like my featherweight. Look at this. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Ta -da. This is excellent. All right, so we're gonna let Erica talk about our last step today. So Emily, do we have any final questions? We're so glad we that everybody keep is asking joining questions, us, right? Yeah. So actually, we have two. And um, Mary is wondering, Erica, did you bring your clapper to show how to use it today? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I did. Yeah. Here's my clapper. So I got mine from the Celtic Quilter. You can see it says Celtic Quilter. But here we go. So I'm gonna just press. This was my last seam. So let me just press it, and then that's. That's it. Oh, that just holds it down. Oh, that's it. That. But it's sevy. It is solid maple, and you just let it sit there till while it cools off, and then it really does help flatten that seam. We'll we'll take a look at it in a minute. That is so cool. Okay. okay. Perfect. I'm gonna turn my iron off. All right, turn your iron off. All so, right. Tell everybody our last step. So the last step, once you've got your houses all made, is to sew them together two by two. Like the arc. Like the arc, two by two. <laughs> and you're gonna put a sashing strip in between them. So that's sitting there. I've got a finished house over here. I'm just gonna sew a sashing strip onto one side and then we'll sew the other one on the other side. There you go. 
And then okay. when she's done with that, we're gonna just pat ourselves on the back and say this part is Job done. Job well done. Yeah, exactly. I'm excited about this. That's right. So the sashing strip is actually with our one and a half inch strip die. Yes, this is the one and a half inch. And I believe that that is the same width for all the sizes of patterns. But again, check your pattern. Read your pattern. Read your pattern. I know we're all guilty sometimes of not reading our pattern, but trust me, you want to read your pattern. All the things to do today. Right. Do we have time for one last question? Oh, yes, yeah. I'm just sitting Absolutely. here. Love it. Well, Miss Karen E is wondering, can you make this with a Go Baby? Yes, because the four, five, six, eight, and nine inch cubes will all fit through that Go Baby That's or the right. Go Me fabric cutter. That's right. Okay. So That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at my seam. Look how flat that is. Whoa. Can you see that, Justin? Flat as the Nebraska prairie. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And again, this is going to press out. And I don't need to press it. I can just sew my go. other house on. Yes. Oh, look Ooh, really important to keep track of your pieces, quilters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't be like Erica and Pam and lose all your pieces. Holy smokes. <laughs> oh, the other day I was sewing and I needed the centerpiece for the grandmother's fan and I could not find that for all the money. Oh. It was stuck to my pants. I have a grandmother's <laughs> fan project I have to get going there get going too. On. Okay. It's that really cute one that makes a heart. Oh, there you go. I think it's called grandmother's heart. There you go. Aw. Okay. All right, quilters, don't forget this project is all about having fun and sewing together. So if you're making one of the smaller versions, you want to, maybe you want to make more houses and trees or maybe two rows yeah. or maybe make it a little table topper. That's right. You can do whatever you want. There is no dye police. That is right. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm okay. done. So like we, I, I said earlier with the small ones, two rows facing opposite directions in that four or five inch size would be adorable. But again, you're in the driver's seat and we can't wait to see your progress. So remember, when you post those in your comments, the last thing you type in is hashtag AQSOS. And I know Pam and I are gonna be posting our pictures. We can't wait to see your posts as well. Now we're gonna be talking about personalizing our projects even more in our next sewing session, which is next Friday. That's right. So start thinking of ideas for your project now. That's right. We've got all kinds of all kinds of ideas up our head. So along with personalizing options, we'll be sewing everything together. We'll be talking about border options, quilting methods, and binding techniques. And you don't want to miss the last part of our sew along for the Go Row House Runner. So be sure to register on our events page because we have a very special giveaway for that show. Oh, that's it's right. It's full of goodies donated by our good friends at the Celtic Quilter. They are our local AccuQuilt retailer. So turn in, tune in on Friday, October 28th at 12 noon central time. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think I even saw a smaller version of a clapper in that basket. There is indeed. So be sure to register. Don't forget there's even more tips and tricks on this part of the runner in my blog post today called Go Row House Runner, Building Your Houses. That's right, along with this post, the wonderful Erica also wrote ones for part one and the introduction to the runner. Both are filled with even more ideas to help you make this runner your own. She'll be writing one more post for the last section as we make it together. And, and others beyond that, it's not like it's my final blog post ever. So, okay, so I just, I just clapped my last seam. There you Here go. we go. So here are two houses together. Look at how fun that is. So cute. And so quick. So quick. If we weren't chit chat and think how much I could have done. Here, I can turn it I for do you love just. the truck or the little wagon Look in the middle. how cute that is with that fussy cutting. It just adds such a little spark. Really fun. And wait till you see some of the ideas we've got for next week. And before we wrap up part two of our so long, we want to announce the winner of today's giveaway, which is oh, our that's right. And that not included. That's right. <laughs> our giveaways are one way we like to say thank you to our viewers who registered for the show and tuned in. Yep. So the winner today gets a rotary cutter, a ruler, our, one of our Go mugs, and a green cutting mat, Emmett not included. Emmett not included. And the included. winner of the rotary bundle and coffee mug combo is, drum roll please, 
Dolores A. of Sun City, Arizona. Congratulations. Congratulations. You should get you an Emmett, though. Yes. Emmett yes. is on the set of every live show. Yes, did Some you know that? Something to look for. So look for him. Quilters, don't forget, we have got plenty of special offers available for you on our website. Our current deals are truly, truly, truly better than Black Friday offers. Listen to what we say. That's right. They are better than Black Friday, so don't wait. To get your order in right now, and you really do want to order now, yes. Um, open up a new tab, type in acucool.com slash party to see our current deals and place your orders. These are, listen to this, the best prices of the year. So you don't want to miss out. Don't wait till Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Do your shopping right now, now today. Right now. Well, it is time for us to go and get ready for part three. We hope you're as excited as we are about getting even closer to finishing the Go House Runner project. Hey, thanks for joining us for part two of the Go Row House Runner so long. We can't wait to finish this project with you. And don't forget to post pictures of your project on social media with the hashtag AQSOS so that everyone can see what you're doing. That's right, we promise to post too. We can't wait to see your finished runners. And remember, at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time. So you can quilt and sew long more. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Quilts Go Me? This lightweight, compact fabric cutter will inspire makers everywhere to experience the joy of quilting. It makes a great starter set for those new to quilting or to the AccuQuilt system. The Go Me provides a safe, fun, and easy way to cut a variety of fabrics for quilting. It also makes a great gift. This perfect starter set comes with the Go Me fabric cutter, two Go dies, a cutting mat, and five fabulous patterns. Just add fabric and you'll have everything you need to create your first project. Look what we made using just these two dies. Plus, it's compatible with more than 200 dies in our Go collection. The Go Me's compact design is made for quilters with life on the go. With AccuQuilt and the new Go Me, we can help you cut time so you can quilt more. Are you or someone you love an avid quilter? Meet the Ready, Set, Go Ultimate Fabric Cutting System. This fabric cutter takes the strain out of fabric cutting, meaning less chance of injury and better quilts made faster. The Ultimate Fabric Cutting System includes the Go, our innovative fabric cutter with an easy to turn handle that makes cutting fabric safer, faster, and more accurate. This 15 pound fabric cutter has a carrying handle and folding mechanism, so it's portable and easy to store. The Ready, Set, Go also includes the Go Cube Mix and Match 8 inch block which features eight dies of commonly used geometric shapes and the corresponding cutting mat. The Go Cube Mix and Match system has endless pattern possibilities, but it comes with a 16 page pattern book with two quilt patterns to get you started. We like to say the Ready, Set, Go is the ultimate fabric cutting system because it truly comes with everything you need. That includes our Go Strip Cutter, two and a half inch, which finishes to a two inch finish strip, a corresponding cutting mat to make cutting binding strips easier than ever. We've even included a die pick to make die maintenance painless. To help quilters feel confident on their quilting journey, we've also included the Go Cube Mix and Match Blocks and Quilt Pattern Book by Eleanor Burns. It's packed with tips and tricks in addition to inspiration. 
Look at some of the beautiful projects you can create with this ultimate fabric cutting system. At AccuQuilt, we want to spread the joy of quilting to all, and the Go makes cutting fabric easier than traditional scissors or rotary cutting. AccuQuilt, because cutting time means quilting more. ultimate fabric cutting experience, you need the go big in your sewing space. This all electric fabric cutter is hands free, making it the cutter for those with physical limitations. The go big is safe, easy to use, and is compatible with every die in our go collection. That's more than 250 dies. The wide opening allows you to run two six inch wide dies through at once, upping your efficiency and lowering your cutting time. Though it's our widest go cutter, the go big is still portable and features a handle to make it easy to store or travel with. When you buy the go big electric starter set, you get the go big fabric cutter, the three by six inch finish go flying geese die, a cutting mat and five fabulous patterns. Look at some of these beautiful projects you can create with the Go Big. The Go Big has all the perks of AccuQuilt's amazing Go product line with none of the manual work. Don't give up your quilting craft. Go Big. AccuQuilt, because cutting time means quilting more.